I've I've fallen down a very specific rabbit hole where basically I have been reading reviews like it's an addiction. I've been reading reviews from people from other countries. Okay, so they don't live in the U.S., but they come here from all over the world, and I have been reading their reviews of having Doritos for the first time. And y'all, I think we did crack again because because when they come over here, it's people from France being like, I just, I had one, my friend offered me one, and then when I looked down, I don't know how much time it passed, but there were six bags on the ground. And this is my thing, like, maybe... Maybe what we are doing with Doritos is bad. You know what I mean? Because when you read the back of a bag of Doritos and you look at the ingredients, they all are words longer than what should be in food. (laughs) If you read the back of a bag of of, of Doritos, it looks like the recipe for meth, right? (laughs) It's just a lot of propylene glycol sound and stuff and everything. So no wonder they come from around the world. They come from Europe, Asia. They get addicted and everything. It's sad to watch. It really is, because then they're in the review. They're like, I just ate so many, and I couldn't stop. And then if you're reading it as an American, you're like, yeah. Like, that's... <laughs> this isn't exactly news or anything, you know? If anything, that's, that's on you for getting six of the little bags. You should have got a family size bag. <laughs> You know what I mean? If it's just you eating by yourself, you get the family size back. It is fiscally irresponsible what you're doing right now. <laughs> just getting six bags of the little ones like you're going to stop or something. You can't control yourself. You're in it now. <laughs> you know? And I, sometimes I see them. Sometimes I see them over... I'm like... You know them. You know them when you see them because you can check the fingers, right? <laughs> You know, let me see your hands. And you see the hands, like, addicted. (laughs) What a shame. Because no other country lets their companies do to the people what we let the companies do to us as far as ingredients. Like, we're like, man, it's very good. It's so good. It is good. It's not good for you. And it does have a taste that should not be in a human mouth. And I can tell that because people who have been alive for a long time are like, I've been eating forever. And I've never eaten anything like this before. It's taken me to a place I don't know if I want to go to. (laughs) And you're reading them and you're like, how is it this serious? But then you actually travel, because like I've traveled around the world and stuff, and I've been to some of these countries that talk about the Doritos, and I can tell they're going to get addicted. Because when I go there and I eat their food, I'm like, yeah, y'all missing. (laughs) Y'all missing quite a few flavors. Your palate isn't ready. And you can tell that because you'll go to like the Netherlands or something like that and they'll be like, oh no, don't eat our, don't eat what we make. Go to like a Turkish restaurant or something. If you eat what we make, you'll die. Like don't do it. We make cardboard over here. Don't, your stomach not ready for what we do over here. We just boil the water and eat it. Like, You know, but I was reading, there was one dude from Poland who was like, I don't know what to do with myself. He said, I'm reading it, I don't know what to do with myself. I've had every flavor multiple times. A friend, a friend gave me some at a party. They always started like that too. Like a friend, a friend gave me some while I was at a party. They started with that peer pressure type stuff. And that's how you can tell it's drugs for them. They're like, my friend introduced me to Doritos. I was young and innocent. <laughs> now, now I've been I've been running up and down town trying different flavors and stuff. And this dude from Poland was basically this is like on a Reddit post, and this dude was pretty much admitting that he was extending his stay in the states <laughs> to spend more time with Doritos. <laughs> He's like admitting to the open internet that he is overstaying his visa (laughs) to eat as as many Doritos as possible. He is risking ever being able to return to the country. (laughs) I live in New York and sometimes I'm walking down the street. Sometimes I walk from show to show instead of taking the train and stuff. And I was walking from one show to the other. I was passing this bodega and outside bodega was a dude that was over here like you know just standing there doing one of these and everything and I don't know I, 
I've been I've lived in some bad neighborhoods, all right? And when you see this, you know their day isn't going well, right? <laughs> This right here, if you walk up on somebody and they're doing this, you're about to be asked for a favor, right? Like, this is, these are not the movements of someone that's just going to wish you a good day, right? It's like, you're about to hear a story when you see this. And so I'm walking by, and as I walk by, he's like, um, excuse me, sir. And I was like, oh, um, that's different. Uh, what's up? How you doing? He's like, oh, I was just wondering if you could spare... A, a, a dollar or two so I could get something to eat in, in there and then I had a five dollar bill in my pocket so I handed it to him he's like oh thank you thank you so much and to get some Doritos <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm an enabler <laughs> um, I've been very excited to come to Dallas and uh, and spend time with you, make you laugh and everything. I love coming here because I grew up in Louisiana. And so we would come to Dallas a lot. Yeah, didn't tell you which part. Um, and I, I would visit, you know, Dallas sometimes growing up and stuff. And, you know, the thing that we're known for in Louisiana and in Texas is just amazing food right things things that will change your life things that you won't forget amazing meals of every type you know like we're known in louisiana for a lot of the creole stuff jambalaya and you know gumbo everything like that and then in texas is a lot of the barbecue a lot of, a lot of good meats and everything and then you see people in other parts of the country that will start a whole restaurant pretending to do what y'all do here <laughs> right like pretending to be the same you know, and then you'll go there. You might even go. You might even walk into a, a you know real Texas barbecue restaurant in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and, you, and you're nice. You're cordial because you're good people. And you sit down and you have a couple bites. And then you're like, no, 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 no. That was good. That was good. You tricked me. You got me to come in. That's good. I like what you did there. It's because you got the font right. You got the font on the... Uh, that's what got me. You got the print right on the awning. And, ooh, okay. Because mm -hmm. this isn't Texas toast. This is fat bread. You did fat bread. You didn't do any... Oh, you won't get me again, but that's nice. That's nice. Got to give it to you. Wow. You know? And that, that's the thing is that sometimes, you know, you, you have food that, that people really believe in, but it is bad. It's just, it's just not good. Belief doesn't make a meal, right? And especially when I look online, you know, it feels sometimes like we're, like we're lost, you know? And I can tell that we're lost just because of what I see happening nonstop. Also online, you... Because you have a forum, because people can comment, I see people say some of the most beautiful things and some of the most hateful things to each other that we know people wouldn't have the courage to say in person, right? Sometimes you're in person and maybe you want to tell someone how great you think they are, but you're worried about being embarrassed, so you keep it in or you just give them a thumbs up, whatever the thing is, right? But online, if you're never going to meet this person, you can really let them have it one way or the other, good or bad, right? And so I've seen some really like hateful comments that I know people wouldn't say if they were in person with the person, right? And when it comes to cooking TikToks, I think some of this hate doesn't go far enough. I think that... I think it's important to really let the people know you know what I mean? Because you you watching whole nasty recipes be made and then people just commenting the vomit emoji. It's like, no, 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 no. We need to get into their personality. We need to get into their upbringing. We need to get into why they thought this was a good idea. Because they love to do it. They love to make nasty food and then film themselves. No shame. Film themselves making the nasty food. Food that should be illegal. The, poli the police should be kicking the door open as we speak. And not only did you not keep this a secret, you filmed it, you, ed you did an edit, and then you put it out for the world to see. You self-incriminated for no reason. And all this nasty food is somehow world famous or it's Nana's. Stop putting bad food on your Nana. Don't do that. 
You know she didn't bring you up like that to be making this slop. You know, you know that grandma is turning her grave right now knowing that you're putting stuff like that on her name. Because then the recipes don't make sense. They're like, you could use uh, half a cup of sugar or salt, whichever. And it's like, that's, that's a lunatic. That's an actual terrorist right there. That's wild that you're just telling people that. Why do you believe that? It's upsetting because then, but back in the day, you know, this, this is what I'm told by my, by my mom. This is what I was told by my grandma. You know, back in the day, if you had a recipe that was nasty, you couldn't just broadcast it to the world like that, the way the open internet has allowed us to. You had to poison people one at a time. You had to... <laughs> You had to invite them over to your home. You had to say, come on, no, let me cook for you. And then you had to sit them down. And then they had to smell what was happening and decide to stay. It was a lot that went into feeding bad food to people back in the day. And then maybe if you got famous enough, you could have a cookbook. And then one of the cookbooks, maybe you falling off and nobody knows you because they didn't make it themselves. But now you see people and, and the videos look good. Ingredients popping up on the screen and then they pop off and then they're chopped and it's like it's a beautiful thing to watch but then you see them you see them take a bite of it and you can tell it's nasty because they only take one bite and then the video ends they don't serve it to anybody they mm, mm. because you know you've been invited to someone's house that thought they could cook but couldn't and then you, you took a bite. You're a good person. So you go ahead and you take a bite and you know when you take that first bite, okay, I'm gonna have to get rid of this. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to figure out a way. If there's a dog nearby, if there's a, but I'm not gonna swallow, no. You're not gonna get me. You take that first bite and they're like, how you like it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can tell you made something nasty if somebody take a bite and then is, can I be excused real quick? Where's your bathroom at? <laughs> they just in that bathroom sweating, just like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> it's a full plate. <laughs> oh, it's really horrible what people have done to each other. You know what I mean? It's just with a straight face too. And now you got people broadcasting Come with me while I make my Nana's world famous mayonnaise grapes or whatever. Like, and they don't even know there's anything wrong with it because once again, they weren't, they weren't brought up with sense. You know, the amount of times I've been brought over to someone's house and look, if anyone goes to the trouble of cooking for me, I appreciate it. You took your money, you bought the ingredients and maybe you messed it up, all right? Maybe that's what happened, but I still appreciate the effort, right? As long as I don't have to finish it, you know? Because the amount of times I've been invited to someone's house and been fed shepherd's pie. <laughs> you can tell from your groans. Like, shepherd's pie is already on the line. Shepherd's pie is crip walking a tightrope of nasty, right? <laughs> One false step as shepherd's pie has fallen into slop, all right? You can't just do whatever you want with shepherd's pie and make it delicious. That's not how the world works. And I have been fed shepherd's pies that make you go, maybe I don't know how to eat. Maybe I'm the one. You know what I mean? Because I'll bite to a shepherd's pie and they'll be like, mm, what just cut my mouth? Because that's what I hate. If you invite me over, at least know you cook what you cooked. No, you can do the thing that you said you don't invite me over and then be like, you know, I just went ahead and threw out the cookbook on this one and just went with the flow. Not with my mouth. <laughs> the amount of shepherd's pies I've had where I've been like, all right, how good of a friend are they? <laughs> One time I got invited to a friend's house and he made shepherd's pie and okay, he, he put the shepherd, he played at us, right? Gave us the bowls of shepherd's pie or whatever and then fed the dog at the same time and the bowls looked the same, right? And so I was like, what did you do for this to look like this? There's shepherd's pie and then look, this is, I'm gonna lose some of you but we have to talk about it, all right? 
I've been invited to friends' houses before where they have served. I won't even say sir. They subjected me <laughs> to their version of pot pie. Pot pie is unacceptable, all right? Pot pie is absolutely insane. First of all, I, I, knew, I knew I didn't have money growing up when my mom would take us to Walmart and we would go to the frozen section and she would grab that banquet pot pie, right? <laughs> That red box of pot pie in the only condition where a pot pie looks good is that picture. When they pull it out the oven and they do the slit and the steam coming up. And you don't even see, you see the steam and you see the crust of the pie. You don't see the slop that's happening below. You don't see the insanity that's having that hot sludge with peas and carrots and supposedly chicken. You're not seeing any of that. That's not chicken. I know chicken. Me and chickens are tight, right? I know chickens back and forth, left and right, and that is not chicken, okay? That's not chicken at all. I don't know what it is exactly, but it doesn't have the consistency. That's not chicken at all. Sitting there with a pot pie. Pot pie is disgusting, okay? I remember the first time my mama fed me a pot pie. Went, got it, put in the oven, was telling me about it. Oh, you know, I think you'll like it, everything. And then, you know, she pulls it out of the oven. I remember my first bite of pot pie. I looked at my mama and said, Mama, I'm going to work so we don't have to live like this. Like this a... <laughs> mama, I'm going to change our lives, okay? It won't be like this forever, all right? Because I know you're doing your best. <laughs> Pot pie, the hot sludge that is under the crust of pot pie. And then I had a friend try to argue with me about pot pie. He was like, no, the crust is the best part. Ooh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Wait, if you think crust is the best part of the pot pie, ooh, I got good news for you. I got, if you love the crust of a pot pie, I got a good word for you today. There's something called bread, all right? <laughs> Oh, if you love the crust of a pot pie, wait until you meet bread. Bread, when bread comes into your life, ooh, it's gonna change. If you love the crust of a pot pie so much you're willing to endure a pot pie, then get ready to meet toast. Oh, oh, oh. you can have dry, crusty, delicious bread that has nothing to do with purple, Greek sludge, whatever. <laughs> Because that's the other thing. It's people's version of pot pie. So I've had pot pies that were just like the standard peas and carrots and chicken or a little bit of beef or whatever. But I've also had ones where they were like, oh, I threw a little goat's cheese in there. I did. This is not up to interpretation. <laughs> this thing is nasty through and through. Pot pie. <laughs> Pot pie is white slave food, all right? <laughs> this is the food of subjugation. This is the food of fiefdom, all right? Pot pie makes sense if this is the 1600s. We don't have to do this. We are Americans. People fly from around the world and overstay their visas to eat our crack Doritos. I've been watching so much news, which is, which is depressing. You know what I mean? It's like, they don't tell you about the good stuff. You know, you gotta go find the good stuff on your own. It does feel like, I'm not gonna speak for anybody here, but it feels like, for the most part, I think I feel the way a lot of people feel, which is a sort of disillusion with some of even the, the process of, of politics, you know, because we've, we've become accustomed, because we have more access to information than we've ever had, and because um, we at least see ourselves as more discerning than we've ever been, we feel like we can tell when someone is lying, right? And 
we've all known and accept that politicians lie. It's to the point now where we don't even really judge who we vote for off of who lied the most. We, we judge it off of like how many people accidentally told the truth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you, you look down the ticket and you're like, mm, he got caught in that hot mic. I like that. That was a good one. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I, and I get it. It, it's, it. it sucks not just to be lied to, but to when you're lied to, you, you, you know. And when you figure it out, you, you see the manipulation that was at play. And if someone's trying to manipulate you, they don't respect you. They don't, they don't care about you. You know what I mean? Even when they say they're doing it for your own good, it's like some of the things, let me decide, right? So we don't like when our politicians lie to us, but I don't know if we really want them to tell the truth either. <laughs> Imagine a local politician or maybe your country's representative coming to you and just being like, ah, um... No, we're f we're f it's, it's bad. It's bad. I don't think we can recover. This is this is beyond repair. Doesn't feel great because that sounds very true. I hope you're lying. Some people, you know, offer up the truth even when they don't need to. I mean, and sometimes that's a, a noble thing, and sometimes it's a very dumb thing. Sometimes it's just an odd thing. Like, RFK told the truth this week about... <laughs> I'll back up. Uh... <laughs> in New York City, in Central Park, in 2014, there was a bear that was found in Central Park. Uh, they're not native. Um... <laughs> There was a bear that was found in Central Park next to a bicycle, right? And no one understood what happened. The police looked into it. The police couldn't figure it out. Uh, the internet sleuths couldn't put anything together. It was a genuine mystery, a decades-long mystery up until uh, this week. <laughs> when RFK Jr., for no reason, told the world, y'all, that was me. That was... Uh, I did do that one. Uh, so, RFK, as he tells the story, uh, apparently him and his friends were going falconing. I don't know what falconing is. All I know is you took the word falcon and you made it a verb, right? I don't know if falconing means you hunt falcons or that you use falcons to hunt or you just talk to falcons. I don't know. I don't know what y'all doing out there, but you put ing behind it so I know it involves the falcons, right? And RFK Jr. was on his way to go falconing. And he, he's on his way, and then he stops in the road because the person in front of him stopped because the woman in the car in front of him had hit a bear and, and killed it, right? And so RFK gets out and sees that she's killed this bear, and he's like, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> which is interesting, right? That's probably one of the last things I would have guessed you'd say when you see a dead bear. And, and so he takes it, he puts it in his car, and then he goes falconing with his friends, and they're having a good time. Um, I know we're talking about RFK, but for a split second, I want to focus on the woman that was driving, right? Because there are a few shocks that she had to get over within her day. Um, one, you're driving. You're just a woman in the world living your life, and you're driving. And then something runs out on the road in front of you, and you hit it, right? And that is a car accident. Like, we can't forget, this person was in a car accident. Like, I, I hope she didn't have any injuries or anything. And just a near miss alone can be shocking. It can rattle you for, like, days or a long time. Depends on what, what, what happened. And so she hits this thing and has to get over the initial shock of almost being in what could have been a very bad car accident. And then she gets out and she's like, what did I hit? Was it a deer or something? It wasn't a deer. It was a bear, which is specific. <laughs> I don't know anyone else it's happened to. <laughs> and so you get out of the car and you're standing over this bear that you've just hit. And you're also, wow, I was almost in an accident. So I'm shocked. My heart is racing. It's sad. I've just killed this animal. And then 
RFK Jr. <laughs> walks up to the other side of your car and stands over the bear with you and goes, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> like you were selling it at a yard sale. And so RFK Jr. went falconing with his friends and they were, they were falconing for a while, apparently. According to him, they were having a great time. So I don't know if the birds were extra talkative that day or I don't, know, I don't know what was happening. But they were like, you a falcon, you a falcon, you a falcon. And then, and then the falcons, I guess, were like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know what noise they do. I don't know what they do. But, you know, he's over here falconing, falconing, falconing. And then they go to dinner, right? Where I'm sure they ate a different type of meat. And... He's talking to his friends because the reason he took the bear was to skin it and eat the meat, which I didn't know was an option. I didn't know that bears were running around just big ass chickens. I had no idea. And so, you know, he's talking to his friends and he's having a great time at dinner. And then he realizes, ah, oh, I actually have a flight. I can't keep this bear in my car and apparently throughout the entire meal when he's talking to his friends about the bear being in his car no one went what that never happened didn't occur at all and maybe that's just how they roll as friends maybe RFK had a bear in the back and his friend was like I got two giraffes like <laughs> and you know what it's like when you get two giraffes in the back of your car and they get all knotted up and everything you gotta you gotta take them home and then unwrap them like some headphone cords, you know? <laughs> and so then RFK decides that, you know, he obviously can't keep the bear in his car and he has a flight and everything and I guess no one else wanted the bear. Um, <laughs> and so he went to Central Park and as a joke, this was like a prank that he was doing. He, he left the bear with a bicycle that he also had to get rid of. I don't know how big his vehicle is. <laughs> how big is your vehicle that you got a bear in there and you have a bicycle at the same time? So then he leaves the, the bear and the bicycle in Central Park and then goes and has his flight and goes wherever. And the next day... Um, no one really got the joke. Like, no one really... <laughs> the next day, everyone was mostly confused. They were like, so... Did someone hit the bear with a bike? <laughs> or was the bear riding a bike? <laughs> and then decided to die? Like... <laughs> was the bear on a bike and then was like, this ain't for me. You know what I mean? And so no one knew, no one put it together, no one solved the mystery until now because RFK Jr. came clean. Because he was the only one that knew. The other reason that no one solved it until now is that the woman who, let's go back to her for just a quick second. <laughs> I think the woman that hit the bear and then gave it to RFK or let him take it and then went about her life, you know, she also didn't come forward because I think the next day when she turned on the news and saw the bear in Central... <laughs> she had to have been like, nah. There's no way. I like to think that from her perspective, she hits the bear, RFK takes it, she goes about her life, but then the next day, she thinks that RFK thought that he needed to make it look like an accident. Like, <laughs> 